Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neo, and I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. I did not think we would be doing any more of these Shira videos. Netflix Shira. There was an article put out there today. Oh, it's not just Shira. It's their shows in general, but they focus heavily on Shira. Yeah, on uh, comic book resources, of course. Uh, saying that uh, the worst trend in 80s cartoons was that they had toy lines and, uh, you know, Netflix fixed it by by changing everything about She-Ra and He-Man. They fixed it now. by appropriating something that already existed and pissing all over it. And the only reason they could reboot these franchises in the first place was that they were incredibly popular. Uh, and and they still were. Bankrolled by toy lines. Right, yes, right. Because, yes. you know, meanwhile, a bunch of uh, shows are getting canceled and the ones that are staying are getting picked up are things like Coco Melon because it actually sells toys. But, you know, um, this was obviously a bait article. Um, so we're going to take the bait so you don't have to. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Almost 284,000 subs. Thank you for the support. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the subscribe button. Ring the bell. You will not get notified if you don't ring the bell. That's how it works. YouTube likes to make things incredibly complicated now. Mm -hmm. They want to really, truly make sure that you actually want our content, unless you hate watch us. And in that case, they, they keep recommending our videos to you. So if you're coming into this video watching it, because you're hate watching it. Guess what? YouTube is going to say, hey, you like Clownfish TV? You watched that video. We're going to keep shoving it in your face. Oh, Lowen, I told him that. Oh, that's OK. That's that's OK. Uh, we like to be shoved in your face. Mm -hmm. uh, you keep shoving your shit in our face. So, <laughs> hey, we get tagged in it. People keep t using our name, invoking us on stuff we didn't even say. But I'm totally going to stand by everything I say in this video. All right. So let's let's talk about this. This is this is something that comes up often. This is coming from CBR. So I, I'm, I'm guessing probably some AI generated the headline like this would be a good article for clicks and views. Beep, boop, bop. Yep. And then they're like, yes, let's do it. Um, you know, take another swing at 80s cartoons being Toy commercials, and yes, a lot of them were, but here's the thing. Uh, there was actually some damn good entertainment that has withstood the test of time, and they keep rebooting them again and again. What's so ironic about this is they reboot these franchises with people who hate the origins of these franchises, right. and they always misrepresent the people that worked on the original version well, they keep, of it. They keep implying that that if that the originals were, were crappy stories because they're just made to sell toys but that wasn't what happened usually what happened was they had a toy line and they would hire entire teams and studios to make a good compelling story you know that happened to be about the toys but the stories themselves were still good this whole idea that they, the story sucked but i'm gonna be honest here the reason they're like this is because they're, they're they, they go on about how sheer won a glad award that's what this whole thing's about the new show was basically every checkbox you could ever shove in and toxic relationships for the shippers and they're masquerading as being good meanwhile it didn't make money which is why it didn't make more so this is so funny this is actually coming from the princesses of power subreddit mm -hmm. these people hate us they hate us. They they constantly were posting our, our videos over there, over on Reddit. I don't know if it was this. Oh, they do? <laughs> I don't know if it was this subreddit in particular, but I know that a lot of people were dragging our She-Ra He-Man videos. We were actually there and fans of the originals. Most of these people weren't even alive then. Now, now, years after the fact, years after the show is over, they're acting like they just found this out. Just in case anybody doesn't realize the original He-Man and She-Ra shows were also extremely gay, here's two sorceresses fighting in 83. Filmation was one of the gayest places in town, said Erica Scheimer, voice actress, daughter of the show creator, Lou Scheimer, and happily married lesbian. No shit! What? You don't say! What? It's almost like we've been saying that the whole damn time. Whenever you're going around making comments about, you know, the toxic cis white men that were doing the She-Ra show, even the down to the dolls, when it was women who fought to get the dolls, the, the so they looked more manly and thick to begin with. Yes. But you don't, you hear anything about that except for when we say it. So the story was, and this is why we oh, got, this people. is why we got so pissed off. Because regardless of what you think of the quality of the, the original show, it had a lot going for it. A lot of the writers who worked on the show actually wound up working in, in science fiction. J. Michael Straczynski wound up, you know, Babylon 5 mm -hmm. and, and uh, became pretty well regarded, right? Um, the thing that, that's so disgusting about this was that that was the, the narrative when this show dropped was 
the old show was designed for grown men to fap to. And, and was, to sell toys. It was a really shitty show because it was just to sell toys. Even though the toy line, you, you put the toy line up next to the cartoon in both cases with Filmation, and there weren't a lot of similarities. Like, in fact, Filmation, because of story reasons, would actually not use certain toy line characters because they're like, it doesn't fit with the world we've created. In fact, that was one of the demands that Lou Scheimer made when uh, he was working with Mattel was he's like, we get complete creative control over the world, whatever. And every once in a while, that's they would, why it's still popular to this day. It was story. It first. was, it was story first. It was I'm story so first. tired of hearing this weak ass narrative. Just because you say it over and over again, doesn't make it true. And it's not true. And I'm so effing tired of hearing about it. Yeah. So this is, this is, yeah, you know, um, so we're going to, we're going to talk about this article here first. This is bait, obviously. And I think it was an AI headline because I think that's right. why a lot of these value. Yes. Out, and uh, yeah, we're going to mention the fact that the original she pitch was more like the she show from the eighties yes. and not the identity checkbox, collect them all show that you ended up doing. Cause that's basically what it was. It was a vehicle to shove every identity politic they possibly could shove into it for no reason. And to promote toxic relationships as the goal. By people who clearly hated the original series or were they, too young oh, to remember. Yeah. The I didn't series. watch it. I didn't watch it, but here, so here's the thing. This is, and I've always said this about sh the she show. Look, it's obviously not for me. If it was not she if it was something completely different that, you know, Stevenson and company did that was like the super sword sisters or something. I really wouldn't have any place to say anything about uh -huh. it. And I can't really dunk it because some of the voice acting is good. Some of the writing is good. Um, is it Shira? No, no. And it's clear that it's not. And it's clear that again, it's not for me. And it's Steven clear that from the day one, they hated the original show and the original audience. They started out their entire PR campaign was to attack yes. the original, the original creators, the original show, the original voice actors, the fans, everybody who kept she around for 30 some years, they shat on. And that was their, their great big PR move. So even if there was like a bridge that could be there that you could be, people would kind of come across both ways and it would be like, you know, everybody could understand thought from me, but that's okay. They set it on fire. They want, yeah, the Shira reboot. The Shira reboot was a masterclass in how to alienate a potential audience before you even air the show. Take away the the whole we got a glad award for diversity and inclusion. And what else is they have? To, what do they have to say about the show? It's over. That's about it. Because <laughs> you take that away, <laughs> there's nothing really to it. And it's not coming back. I don't think it's coming back. I think if Shira comes back in any form, it's going to be the Amazon reboot, which, which you aren't hearing anything about. Which I think at this point. With all of the cutbacks, in fact, you know, we were going to do another video. We didn't get to it. I don't know if we're going to or not, but, you know, Netflix is cutting like crazy. DreamWorks is cutting like crazy. Um, everybody and the first thing to go is animation. I don't think there's going to be a Netflix she cartoon. I think Mattel will be like, it's been too long. We did not sell toys. And Mattel is, make no mistake, at least with He-Man, Mattel is co-financing these shows with the purpose of, of selling toys. Look at, you know, regardless of what you think about Masters of the Universe Revelation, I think it's dog shit, but they had a plan to sell toys on day one. They started selling the, the toys. The toys are great. The Masterverse toys are amazing. They're fantastic. And that's why it's so heartbreaking. I'm like, even the character designs on the Kevin Smith show are good. The toys look good. I have a few of them. But I'm like, the show itself was not good. Well, we also are biased against that for the shit that we got from Smith. But, you know, I want to point out, what are they still making and selling for she now? Not that show. The classic she dolls. And they're selling out because that's what people want. They don't want this. They wanted actual she -Ra. So Netflix has revived many of them or created similarly licensed shows, except they're actually no, good. They're, yes, right. Yeah, let's talk about the, the, the new she show. Best friend squad. Best friend squad. Let's have a, a sleepover. Were, Let's have princess prom. There was never any stakes. There were never any stakes. Oh, and, in the and show. then they end with them making out because of Cora, like Cora. And but there, but Catra is a toxic bitch. Catra is like, I don't care if Catra was a dude. You'd be the one person that you'd be like, stay away from Catra because that is you're gonna get your ass beat because that woman is nuts. And then, but they're glorifying toxic relationships. Oh God, this is okay. I know I, I told you. I, okay. So here's the thing. Look, even before I get into this, I'm going to tell you how money works because a lot of people who are fans of this shit, especially cartoon stands, don't understand the financial reality. You want to know why shows like Infinity Train and Owl House were canceled? Because they don't toy. They don't toy well. 
They don't merch well. Meanwhile, Coco Melon sells a shit ton of toys. Hell, Blippy, which isn't even a cartoon, sells a shit ton of toys. Well, it doesn't mean they're not a good show. They just right. want to sell toys. But it doesn't mean a show that sells toys is a bad show because it sells toys. Exactly. Uh, Batman the Animated Series did both. Batman the Animated Series was an amazing show. It still is, in my opinion, the best incarnation of Batman ever put to screen. And they still sold a shit ton of Batman action figures. At well, the yeah, time too. and He Man She Ra sold toys and were, was a good show. Good enough that it had a fan base that kept it around for years. The IP was worth uh, bastardizing for your shows. That's what I don't understand. It's like because these shows were so financially successful because of toy sales, there was an incentive and people to being bring so them back. attached to, the, to yes. the show, to the characters. Yes, it's like these shows. The reason they're talking about you know Transformers, there, there would be no Netflix Transformers show, no Netflix He Man show, no Netflix She Ra show if the toys didn't sell, if the show wasn't lucrative. Okay. Well, let's put it this way. If they took Steven Universe and rebooted it again in like 10 years, but made all the, the characters, all the gems, are, you know, are, 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 are men and everybody's straight now for no reason other than the fact that, you know, because they want to hit check boxes or whatever, you'd fucking be pissed. You'd be screaming about it. Well, this it might be a good show, but that's not what that's not that's not Steven Universe. You changed everything about it that made it Steven Universe. It's the same thing. I I cannot wait. I cannot. Well, one, I don't think they would reboot Steven Universe. No, I'm just using it. it's something that they're super toys. attached to. Yes, but it'd be. And they, they redid Owl House or whatever, and they changed everything about it that you love. Made all the characters different than themselves. Just basically use the names of the characters and then a couple story plot points and then changed everything else about it. But you're not allowed to have any opinion of it because if you dislike it, you're a istophobic asshole. And you're not allowed to you're not allowed to have any opinion on it one way or another. It's not for you, so you have to shut up. This is the most ill-informed, idiotic. I mean, I don't know what I expect from CBR. They pay their writers like five bucks an article, and you get what you pay for, right? But the newer shows have more to offer their viewers outside of commercial. The old ones did too. Oh, fuck off. This, uh, How many people that were, especially they were LGBTQ people, have gone up to the creators of the show, the voice actors of the show, and talked about how much the show meant to them and how they felt seen and stuff because of the show? Yeah. I mean, Melanie Britt, it got so bad that Melanie Britt, the original voice actress of Shira, had to step in and be like, would you stop? attacking fans of the old show. Like, you can like your new show. Yeah, like, we, not, we've always said you're allowed to like it. You're but, totally allowed to like it. That's cool. But she's like the marketing people behind DreamWorks. She had to call them out. She's like the marketing people behind the DreamWorks she are horrible. They're attacking old school fans. I don't know what is wrong with them. And it's probably and some they're spreading like, false narratives too. Yeah, I mean, again, right out of the gate, they're like, your show sucks. It's a toy commercial. This is like a, you want to talk cartoon this article and articles like it are fucking cartoons. And the reason that they well, write and them. And it's all about cartoons. Let me point yeah, that out, too. Yeah. At the end of the day, they're all cartoons. <laughs> Netflix's projects have been praised for their animation writing while Arcane even won the Emmys, which I agree with. Arcane's, you know, good. Yeah, but you're comparing apples to oranges here. <laughs> she, she wrote Arcane are two different things. Netflix actually feels invested in creating shows that have artistic value despite being Wait, related to a did product. did you watch the first season of the she show? It was glitchy. The, the half the time, the lines weren't all there. The, the, the animation was shit out and it was clear that it was shit out. It wasn't done very well at all. Okay, I, I'm, I'm going to roundly uh, writer. What's your name here? It's a dude. Uh, dude, Sean. Sean. Sean, do some fucking homework. Okay, very basic homework. Lou Scheimer, Pittsburgh boy, by the mm -hmm. way. Uh, Yay! Was very, he was so much invested in He-Man and She-Ra. And you get very basic research. A simple Google search, you will find this. He was so invested in the story of He-Man and She-Ra that he basically set the terms for Mattel. Like, you will do what we say because we want this to be a He told the toy company what they had to he do. He told the toy company. He said, because the original version of He-Man was basically just a Conan knock off with some science fiction. It's Conan meets Star Wars basically was what it was. And he's like, yeah, it's not going to work for me. He's like, we're going to make it, you know, we're going to turn He-Man into a character that kids can look up to like Superman. And we're going to change attorney and we're going to change this. We're going to give the women a more prominent role. Mm -hmm. Teal and the Sorceress are going to have a more prominent role. And in, instead of just being the female action figure, they're going to have a more prominent role in the series. And we're going to add these other characters. But I want to point out that boys wanted She-Ra and Tila as much as they wanted other yeah. characters. You know? I, I had And girls had the boy characters and the girl characters I did. I had so, I had a She-Ra and a bow. And they played with my He-Man figure. Mm -hmm. I, you most know, and I most mean, dudes do. That's why they don't give them brushable hair anymore. <laughs> Sadly. So... That it was that important, and beyond the show itself, and they made sure that the writing was as good. They got some like heavy hit, like science fiction writer, actual science fiction writers. Lou Scheimer made sure that 
his people got to work uh, by by demanding a 65 episode. Right, order which for, wasn't something that was normal then. It was unheard of. And the reason he did that is he cared about his people. He wanted to make sure that they, weren't, they weren't white all off. straight, white and male either. A good majority of people working at Filmation at the time, and we know some of them, uh, were not straight. They were not straight. In fact, Filmation was kind of the haven. In fact, this is why, this is why. I can't believe they're saying that now. We said it over and over and over er again. Erica Scheimer, his damn daughter, who worked on the damn show. She was a showrunner. She was the showrunner. She was the head of Filmation you know, after he died. Women showrunners didn't happen until N.D. Stevenson, well, who was Noel at the time. Now we it's, well, now I guess there's no there's no female showrunners. Oh, I guess not. Because Andy Stevenson's what a guy now. I, I guess. So I guess well there goes that narrative. So Erica Scheimer, woman showrunner, Lou Scheimer's friggin' daughter, uh, outwardly outspokenly gay, worked on the show. Lots of gay people worked on the show, and nobody cared. And nobody cared. They still like the show. Um. He Man has been regarded as a gay icon for you. This well, is true. Shocker to anybody. You know, you've got wow, you've got this uh, uh, buff dude wearing a loincloth. You know, and, it was uh, a common knowledge. It was, you know, what I'm saying. So there was a lot going on, and again, very basic knowledge. There are several documentaries that you can go out there and watch. Several books written on the subject. There, Sean. Uh, go do some basic research. Now, I can't say that everybody who worked on every show back in the 80s cared as much about it uh, as other people. But since we're talking more specifically about He-Man and She-Ra, I would say that the people who worked on He-Man and She-Ra were infinitely more invested in that show than other toy-related shows. Mm -hmm. So this whole argument that you guys keep running with is a load of shit. It's been disproven repeatedly. But here we are. Um... God, why are they bringing this up now? It's got because it's mostly slow news day. It's got to be. We we're, were even like it's a slow news day, so we'll just uh, we'll just uh, take a couple. Oh, of I, any chance I have a chance to talk about Shira and rip someone a new asshole? I take it. There's something about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, Casey Jones, Ninja Turtles started as an indie comic book. It was not toy motivated at all. In fact, they had to, and I know the guy who was in charge of the licensing of Ninja Turtles. He had to twist their arm. They did not want to pimp out Ninja Turtles. Uh, Eastman yes. Lair. They did not. He had to repeatedly come knocking on their door and be like, guys, you're sitting on. And then when they brought the show to the air, they had to make a shit ton of changes to it to, to get it on the air because the, the comic was too violent. And they added a bunch of other characters that they could market as action figures and mm -hmm. all this shit. But the only reason anybody knows what Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is now is because of the cartoon show. Which led to movies. Which led to movies, which is bankrupt. And lots of people are like, I love the IDW Ninja Turtles comics. Guess what? If Ninja Turtles would have made that jump to television and to, to becoming a huge phenomenon in the toy aisle, you wouldn't be... nobody. All of this. It's all the all same. Transformers the wouldn't still be here. G.I. Joe wouldn't still be here. Financial None of it would incentive. still be here. And when you see them selling this stuff, they're usually selling based on classics. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. And that's that's the thing that gets me too. It's like, well, if the classics were so awful, why is it that when they do reissues? Oh, no, you're, see, look, Netflix tie-in cartoons are good shows. Again, I want to point out with Shira, we had Best Friend Squad. Let's have a princess prom sleepover. Oh my god, party! Okay, so I had to turn off the one season because when they were when Glimmer's mom's probably dead, they're too busy worrying about what they're going to have to eat at her damn party. I was like, "What the hell?" Okay, this is like, where did they find this guy? Like, is this a, is Whoever this a works joke? For cheap. Whoever works for cheap. That's pretty much it. CBR. It's the home of uh, uh, people pretending to be journos. Whoever works for cheap. We've had run-ins with some of them, and like, you, you guys would never work anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I, I can. We wouldn't hire you. What sets these new versions of the shows apart from previous incarnations is the acclaim the series of Earth. Yeah, because they got a GLAAD award. Because they got a GLAAD award. Other, other, so you made it every character identify in some LGBTQ fashion, and they got an award for it. Some of the shows in the 80s, I hate to break it to you, they were nominated for Emmys, and they were Pimpin' Toys, Muppet Babies. Yeah, they actually got Emmys, um, not just a GLAAD award. You know, Netflix has branched out into new forms of tie-in cartoons that have similarly received critical praise, while Masters of the Universe Revelation is considered the best He-Man story ever by who? Who is considering it? <laughs> you this are. This is definitely clickbait. This whole thing is bait. This is bait. But that's okay. Oh, no. It's the guy tried to argue with me last time. <laughs> that motherfucker. Is that, that, guy, who, that. Is that the guy who jumped into your... Wait. But I was, I was... That's the guy who, when I was showing CBR, was complaining or saying about how um, Patty Jenkins 
And they were, they, and then the rumor was out there that she walked out, stormed out, or whatever, and that's why she you know, wasn't doing Wonder Woman three. But CBR was one of the first people to run with that rumor, and then he puts an article out saying that, well, you know, it's really wrong that people are running with that rumor when they were one of the ones who ran with the rumor and never really changed their headline. They just put a correction up later. But the thing is, my point was, they once again contradict themselves because CBR contradicts themselves. And then he tried to argue with me and then tried to act like, oh, yes, because he's a real journalist writing these, you know, p opinion pieces. But they're marked as feature, so you should know they're not news. Okay, so let, let's back this shit up. I remember when Comic Book Resources used to be a proper website. It used run, to be reputable? Used to be reputable with actual interviews with actual people who worked in the comic book industry before Valinette bought them and they were considered a, kind of the go-to, the gold standard of comic book journalism. I don't know what the fuck this Hence the name, is. CBR, Comic uh, Book Resources. So, okay, so you're you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be supporting your claim that it's considered the best He-Man story ever by linking to another author's opinion on your own website that it's the best ever. So yeah, Masters of the Universe Revelation has supposedly 93% critical score, but there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 critical scores by people who probably got screeners. Um, in fact, I know there are some people that gave it negative reviews that were not included in that. Uh, audience score, on the other hand, is significantly worse than that. Uh, and it's been a very divisive show. I'm sorry, you know, but I, I don't think it's overwhelmingly being Basically, this article is, I like these shows. I don't like the old shows. And I want to make a whole article about why. About why my shows are better than your shows. Using the same talking points that, they, they, that have been disproven time and time again. Because they're too fucking lazy to go find new, new points of view. So again... Please show me some supporting evidence. The toy-focused animated show, they're speaking like it's fact. Okay, this is somebody who used to be a newspaper editor and an actual newspaper. Oh, no, right. Remember, we aren't journalists, but they um, are. Mm -hmm. Yes, I cut my teeth working at newspapers and actual newsrooms. The toy-focused animated shows of the 80s didn't receive critical acclaim because the balance was tipped too far toward their commercial aspect. No, one of the reasons that they did get Emmys and stuff, but beyond that, a lot of they were, there weren't awards for a lot of the stuff back then. No, uh, just animation in general. There were a lot of shows back there. Animation has always gotten the shaft. But their mm -hmm. award, the only award they talked about was the GLAAD award. The Glad award. That's the only award mentioned. So they didn't, I, de me and my friends identify in certain ways. And this one got an award because we, we like it because it identifies like we do. That's, that's the argument. Um, now, are some of the shows on Netflix higher quality? Yeah. Uh, actually, what's funny is I don't think they're talking about the CGI He-Man. Why aren't we talking about the CGI He-Man, which I believe. Because it sells toys. It's for kids. Because that actually does sell toys. We're talking about Revelation, but the CGI He-Man is, in my opinion, the superior, vastly superior. And it's more original. Movie. It's more original. And uh, I thought I was going to hate it based on the art style, based on the fact that it was a complete reboot that was very different from the original Masters of the Universe. But it is objectively a much better show. But we're not going to talk about that one. We're only going to talk about Well, it doesn't Kevin prove Smith's. their point. Okay, yeah, it doesn't. Because it's actually, it was designed to sell this whole, No, this whole article was just designed to get people like us to click it. Like I said, we clicked it to call this dipshit out so you don't have to. So I'm going to tell you, um, John, and I hate to break it to you, but if your goal was to get us to hate on it, fantastic. We just got paid a whole hell of a lot more than you will ever get paid at CBR. And then we'll use some of that money to pay our writers on our own site and they'll actually do a journalism. And mm -hmm. I'm just saying, it's a circle of life, baby. Yeah, because this, uh, this is just, it, it, it's the same article we've heard time and time again. It's so stupid. It's just it's his flavor of piss thing. this time. Yeah. But <laughs> I just, um, God, just, I still love this. Like, guess what, everybody? Then why the hell were you yelling at us, telling us we were making this shit up? And now you're all running with it, being like, guess what? Because we didn't universally praise the show like we should have. And people say that we say things we don't actually say. In fact, everybody focuses on the shows we don't like. They never mention ever that we've actually praised the Owl House. We've actually, even though we had issues with the shipping aspect of it, we praised the show overall for its quality. We praised the Dragon Prince, and we've actually said the Dragon Prince is a, a gold standard for how to do diversity right, that the show is actually a quality show, and it feels more like a follow-up to Avatar The Last Airbender than Korra. And that's probably why they never mention it, because it's also a backhand slap at Korra. You know, so these people are just dumb. 
there's dumb people and they're going to keep they, talking they, about this they shit. They keep going everybody else about how they're toxic and they only have their one opinion and won't get a chance. But then they keep doing the same thing. And look, as I said before, you are totally allowed to like the new she show. I have absolutely no problem with that. You like it? Cool. You are allowed to. The problem is you are not allowed to not like it. And I'm tired of the whole thing. If you like it. I don't like it. Yeah. And I'm tired of if you don't like it um, or if you do like it, that you it's your personal mission to go out and shit on everybody else on the source material because that's what you have to do if you like the new show. It's like people are allowed to like the old show. They're allowed to like the new show. Hell, people like both. And that's completely cool. People like Kevin Smith's show. Also very cool. I have no problem with that. What I have a problem with is the fact that no one else is allowed to have an, a differing opinion from yours. And if you and, and immediately if there's a new show that you have to go shit all over the old one to to because you think if you keep piling the shit it's going to raise the new one up but the new one's still sitting on a pile of shit. Anyway, and I don't think you're getting your season six. I hate to break it to you. No, it was so powerful, so good, so everything, and so critically acclaimed and groundbreaking, and everybody loved it. It was making so much money. Why are they going back to classic Shira? Well, it's interesting. just in general with animation, like you're going to have to have a commercial component to it. Because I, I just saw the other day there was a show that was canceled, and the showrunner couldn't understand why it was like the unicorn or something like that. It was Cartoon Network, and I, it's like I can tell you why it was probably canceled. It's probably canceled because it's not going to merch because somebody's got to pay for this shit. But what's we're seeing all these shows get you canceled because they're trying to find they're trying to find shows that actually are going to to sell more than just you know a bunch of cartoon stands on Twitter. Yes. And they're actually people are going to buy shit. They're not just going to watch it for free and then spend hours upon hours finding anybody who likes the uh, another show and shit on them. Half a million to a million dollars an episode for a fanfic. They burned the money. The toys didn't sell. I'm sorry. Yeah, they and, and stop. Them. For the love of God, stop shitting on the original creators of the shows because you wouldn't have a, a fanfic if you didn't have the originals. There are a lot of diverse people who worked on the originals. There are a lot of people who weren't so diverse, but they did a good job on the originals. It was not just a glorified toy commercial. There's a reason why people love the character so much and it's resonated with them for years, enough so that they tried to reboot it now. If it meant nothing, they wouldn't have bothered. And I'm tired of, of, of seeing, you know, old fans vilified. A lot of fans of She-Ra weren't straight white and male too. I'm just saying there were straight white male fans, but a lot of them weren't. It meant a lot to a lot of different people. And I'm so fucking tired of hearing you piss all over it. More people would read comic book resources if it didn't spend so much time trying to dunk on old heads because they made- That was a, their audience. That was their audience. Comic book resources was started decades ago by fans of the actual, this kind of stuff, basically. And uh, they've spent a lot of time, them and several other Valnet sites have spent a lot of time trying to demonize the old audience. They've chased away the old audience. They've chased away the ad revenue. And Valnet, if you're watching, uh, you really need to do a better job vetting your writers because you are actually hiring uh, anti-help, as mm -hmm. I like to call it. You're hiring people that are actively driving away the eyeballs. And um, what are you going to do? You know? Yep. All right. We're going to wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. <laughs> Bye.